Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ride Free Reading Room Tales for Tots program. My name is Granny Jean, and I hope that you and your caregivers will have a good time today. I know I will. So come on, everybody, join in and uh, try to do some of the actions with me. Make this part, uh, you a part of the program and not just watching, okay? And I think the caregivers are important to, to uh, facilitate this, to give your child a much more um, enriched program. So here we go. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Where's your lap? Right here. <clears throat> creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth. But do not let them in. Hide your hands. Hide those fingers. No, we don't put our fingers in our mouth, do we? No. They're, they usually have dirt on them, and, and we don't want that inside us, right? So here we go. Open, shut them. Them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them. Creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth. But do not let them in. No, of course not. We won't let them in. Well, I had a spider here somewhere but I don't know what I did with him. Oh, he's, he's on my neck. He's on my neck. There he is. Pretend you have a little spider. Can you pretend you have a little spider in your hand? And he creeps up like this. It's kind of hard to do, I know. Try it anyway. I know your, your, your mommies and your, your caregivers can get their hand there and show you how, and they'll do it. And you just try, okay? So here we go. Oh, the... Itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Now my bitsy bitsy spider had a great big brother and he, he made some noise when he went up that drain pipe. He sure did. So here we go. Oh, the great big brother went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the brother out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the great big brother went up the spout again. Now they had a little teeny baby. And that little baby didn't make any noise at all. So the itsy bitsy baby went up the spout again. Yeah, you have a baby in your house, do you? Hmm. <clears throat> well, Wizzy Wizard, do you have a tip for us today? Yes, I do. Now, research has shown that it's very advantageous to your child to hear the sound along with the word. And the best way I can think of doing that is is the um, is using their name um, uh, and showing them the letter that it begins with. Also, in, in um, lovely picture books that the libraries have of alphabet alphabet books, you don't go through the whole thing. Just pick a letter that might mean something to them, or the pictures that they're interested in, and talk about those. So uh, when you teach them, uh, explain what the letter is called and the sounds that it makes most important. Thank you. <clears throat> well, talking about babies, this story is about Peter, Peter's chair. Now he's not a baby anymore, is he? He's not even a toddler. I think he's probably around three or four. What do you think? Huh? Peter's chair by Ezra Jack Keats. That says Peter's chair. Oh, he must have a dog. I think he does. His name is Willie. Oh, what is he doing? 
Look at that. How fun. Peter stretched as high as he could. There. His tall building was finished. Look at that job he did. Wow. All those blocks. And what did he put on the very top? Oh, his toy alligator. <clears throat> or is that his crocodile? Crash! Down it came. And boy, look at Willie. I guess Willie was the one that crashed it, huh? What do you think? Shh. Called his mother. You'll have to play more quietly. Remember, we have a new baby in the house. Peter looked into his sister Susie's room. Her mother was fussing. I mean, rather, his mother was fussing around the cradle. That's my cradle, <laughs> thought Peter. And they painted it pink. Hi, Peter, said his father. Would you like to help paint sister's big high chair? It's my high chair, said Peter. He saw his crib and muttered, my crib is painted pink too. Not far away stood his old chair. No, he didn't paint that yet, Peter thought. He picked it up and ran to his room. Well, things are changing, aren't they, Not around that house? Let's run away, Willie, he said. Peter filled a shopping bag with cookies and dog biscuits. We'll take my blue chair, my toy crocodile, and the picture of me when I was a baby. Willie got his bone. And they went outside and stood in front of his house. Oh, this is a good place, said Peter. He arranged his things very nicely. There he is. Put all his things arranged nicely. <clears throat> and he decided to sit in his chair for a while. But, but he couldn't fit in the chair. He was too big. Look at that. He couldn't fit in it. His mother came to the window and called. Won't you come back to us, Peter, dear? We have something very special for lunch. Peter and Willie made believe they didn't hear, but Peter got an idea. Uh. Soon his mother saw signs that Peter was home. That rascal is hiding behind the curtain, she said happily. Now why does she think that? What does she see? Does she see this little sneakers there? She moved the curtain, but he wasn't there. <laughs> Here I am, shouted Peter. Oh. And Peter sat in a grown-up chair. His father sat next to him. Daddy, said Peter, let's paint the little chair pink for Susie. Now, why do you think he did that? He couldn't fit into it anymore, right? And they did. They painted it, but what did Willie do? Oh my, he walked through the paint, just like those mice, the mice that we saw the other day. He made little pink footprints, didn't he? Yes. Peter's Chair by Ezra Jack Keats, a real classic, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I love to bake. 
Now, real bakers, they put on a hat so their hair doesn't come into their food, right? And people in their kitchen, like I, I have short hair, but if I had long hair, I'd tie it back. Yes, I would. It would be safer too. But who wants to a lot of hair in their food, right? Well, tell you what, I have some muffins. Oh, do you know the muffin man, the muffin man, the muffin man? Oh, do you know the muffin man that lives on Drury Lane? Well, yes, I know the muffin man, the muffin man, the muffin man. Oh, yes, I know the muffin man that lives on Drury Lane. Now, do you know the muffin man, the muffin man, the muffin man? Or do you know the muffin man that lives on Drury Lane? Well, yes, I know the muffin man, the muffin man, the muffin man. Oh, yes, we know the Muffin Man that lives on Drury Lane. Oh, yes. And look at those. Don't they look like real muffins? Mm -hmm. Now they're just pretend. They're just pretend. Well, oh, I should have left this on. Because the baker also had some cakes. And he's going to make one for the baby. Baby. What is, what is that letter? That's a B, baby. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Make me a cake for as fast as you can. Roll it and pat it and mark it with a B and put it in the oven for baby and me. Yeah, baby B, baby, 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 right. So here we go. Now you have an initial too. And if your caregivers can help us here, um, you can, do the same rhyme with me, but also insert their names and their and their initials instead. So here we go. And I won't say B, okay? Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Make me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and pat it and mark it with a, and put it in the oven for, and me. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm hungry and I'm going to make myself some pancakes. What do I need? I need some eggs, flour, milk, salt, sugar. No, not too much sugar. How about, how about some blueberries? Sure. So let's, let's mix a pancake, stir a pancake, pour it in the pan, fry a pancake, toss a pancake, catch it if you can. Can you do that? Come on, pretend. Get out your big bowls. Put all the ingredients in, eggs and flour and milk and salt and a little baking powder. Hmm? How about a little bit a little butter there? Okay, here we go. Mix a pancake, stir a pancake, pour it in the pan, fry a pancake, toss a pancake, catch it if you can. Does it? Huh? Yeah, there's my pancake. All ready. Ready to eat. Well, Let's go back to the farm. And it looks like this mama here has some babies. What are her babies? That's a hen. And her baby is a chick. And what do chicks say? Cheep, cheep, cheep. Well, not this chick. This little chick by John Lawrence. She's a very, she's a very strange chick. She is. And there's the mama with all her babies. But here, here's this little guy who, uh, uh, he really, he really is very independent. And there he goes off by himself. <laughs> this little chick. <laughs> and I can't help but make but a song out of this. I don't know why, but that's just the way I am. This little chick went over the way, went to play with the pigs one day. And what do you think they heard him say? Cheep, cheep, cheep. Oink, 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 oink. Oh, what a silly little chick. And look, he's playing with a pig and he's hanging on to the piggy's tail. Look at that, isn't that silly? That's fun. This little chick from over the way went to play with the ducks one day, or rather swim with the ducks one day. And what do you think they heard him say? Cheep, cheep, cheep. <laughs> the 
Mother Duck looks a little surprised, doesn't she? Huh? Oops. This little chick from over the way went to lays with the cows one day. And what do you think they heard him say? Ah, <laughs> oh, what a silly little chick. <laughs> well, now this little chick went over the way, went to jump with the frogs one day. And what do you think they heard him say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how fun. <laughs> this little chick from over the way went to skip with the lambs one day. And what do you think they heard him say? Come on, what did he say? You're right. Ba, 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 ba. There, are they skipping? Yeah, they're skipping. And this little chick from over the way went home to his mom at the end of the day. And what do you think she heard him say? I look at all these words. Chip, 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 chip. Oink, 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 oink. Chip, 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 chip. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Isn't that fun? This Little Chick by John Lawrence. Well, I think we had done this one before, but we'll do it again. Because I want to know if you know where up is and down is. And can you put your hands up? And can you put your hands down? Or can you put your whole body up? Stand up and then squat down when I say down. Let's see. Okay, so here's a soldier. and He's the head. He's the noble duke. Are you ready? You know where up is? Okay. Here we go. Can you do some marching too? That would be good. Here we go. Oh, the noble duke of York had 10,000 men and he marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again and when they were up they were up and when they were down they were down and when they were halfway up the hill they were neither up nor down can you do that with your whole body i bet the bigger kids can come on you try it oh the noble duke of york had 10,000 men and he marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again and when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were halfway up the hill, they were neither up nor down. Did you do that, huh? Were you able to do it? I hope so. I sure do. Well, 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 what are you crying about? Oh my goodness me. Oh, my poor little kitten has lost her mitten and started to cry. So I helped my kitten find her mitten, her beautiful mitten of blue. I found a mitten just right for a kitten under my mother's bed. <laughs> but alas, the mitten was not the right mitten for it was colored red. <laughs> I found a mitten just right for a kitten under my father's pillow. But alas, the mitten was not the right mitten, for it was colored yellow. I found a mitten just right for a mitten, ah, on the hand of my brother's clown. But alas, it was not the right mitten, for it was colored brown. I found a mitten just right for a, uh, my kitten under the laundry so clean. But alas, the mitten was not the right mitten, for it was colored green. I found a mitten. Huh. 
just right for a kitten <laughs> inside a grocery sack. But alas, the mitten was not the right mitten for it was colored black. Let's show that blue one though. With the mitten just right for a kitten under the kitchen sink. But alas, the mitten was not the right mitten for it was colored pink. I found a mitten just right for a kitten inside my favorite shoe. And this time the mitten was just the right mitten for it was colored Blue, and there are his mittens, a pair of mittens, a pair of mittens. They match, don't they? <clears throat> well, one snowy day, do you have some friends you play with, huh? And when you learn to play all together, you can make some wonderful things together. I'd have a lot of fun together, right? So as you get older, you learn how to work with people. So out, out here in the forest, there are many friends. And one is a squirrel. And, and there's a fox too, I believe. There's a blue jay and a chipmunk and a skunk oh, and a bear. and a rabbit and a chipmunk well they all work together one snowy day and this is by Jeffrey Scherer very simple reader one snowy day oh and the blue jays I did have a blue jay I could have brought down too Bear picked up the branches. Deer carried, <laughs> deer brought the broom. Is that a deer? Mouse borrowed the buttons. What did he climb up onto that coat? <laughs> and Blue Jay flew in the scarf. Kitten found the mittens. Squirrel carried the acorns. Rabbit gave up a carrot. I bet that was hard. Skunk offered a hat. Chipmunk juggled the cups. Oh, look at all the cups he has there. <laughs> and Fox made the hot chocolate. The animals rolled. Oh, look at Mouse. He got stuck. <laughs> but I think Bear will come to his rescue. Let's see. Yeah, he pulled him out. And rolled and rolled the snow. Look at that, great big balls of snow. <clears throat> there. There's another one. The smaller animals did the smaller one. Oh. <clears throat> then they piled and piled the snow. And guess what they're making? Bear attached the branches. Poking in inside the middle. <clears throat> Deer held the broom. Mouse pushed in the buttons. Blue Jay tied the scarf. Kitten slid on the mittens. Slid on the mittens. There he is putting the mittens on. And there's Squirrel adding the acorns. <clears throat> 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 
grab it, put on the carrot. Skunk, <laughs> place the hat. Chipmunk, pass out the cups. <clears throat> Fox poured the hot chocolate. He's giving everyone a little bit of hot chocolate. Look at that. They raise their steaming tubs. <clears throat> so there they are, all having some nice hot chocolate. And they're raising their steaming cups to toast their new friend. That's to say, here's to my snowman. Yes, here's to our snowman, even better. So the rabbit and the mouse <clears throat> and the skunk, they all work together. And the bear and the squirrel and the fox, the blue jay, the chipmunk, and who did else did I forget? I'm not sure. They all work together to build a snowman. And there he is. <coughs> well, here we go. There was a man named Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. Where's your chin? The wind came along and blew them in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan began again. There was a man named Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. The wind came along and blew them in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan beginning in. There was a man named Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. The wind came along and blew them in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan beginning in. Can we do faster? There was a man named Michael Finnegan. He grew whiskers on his chin again. The wind came along and blew him in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan beginning again. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But I think it's time for our say our goodbye song. So goodbye to Mr. Fox and thank you for coming <clears throat> and to help our snowman and bye bye to Mr. Squirrel. It's time to say goodbye and bye bye to the kitten who gave us all those mittens and bye bye to the skunk too. They clean up the garbage around here. Bye bye to little Mr. Bunny. It's time to say goodbye. Bye-bye to all my friends and caregivers. And bye-bye to Granny Jean. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for coming. <laughs>